I had never really experienced that sort of an asthma attack before since my asthma was manageable from the age of four to the age of 16. I still, it's it's in, always in the back of my head every time I wake up that day. In this episode of Student Stories, we caught up with recent actor graduate Andriani. While she was in the company of fellow classmates Dylan, Riley, and Stevie, Andriani told us about her experiences with asthma. I just, I remember it started off as like a head cold. Tuesday, it started with a very bad dry cough. And so mum took me to the doctors and the doctor was like, okay, we're gonna give you a preventer. Thursday, I started to deteriorate again and it got worse. And so we went back to the doctors, but it wasn't the doctor that I'd seen, it was somebody else. Now, this lady was horrible. She was absolutely rude. I walked in there, immediately she thought I was lying. And so she's like, well, I'm not going to give you anything. She goes, so just go home, and if you don't feel better, I'll come back tomorrow and we'll think about giving you another Ventolin, which is what I've been using for mm -hmm. the past how many years and what I've been mm -hmm. taking it obviously wasn't working. We went 15 minute drive to my grandparents because my grandmother had picked my brother up from school mm -hmm. and we're driving and as we're driving I immediately stopped breathing. Oh. I went into an asthma attack. I had my, my spacer with me, my Ventolin. I was taking puffs continuously. It was getting worse. I felt dizzy. I, had, I, couldn't have, I didn't have feeling in my hands. So we get out, um, we're, we've arrived at the hospital, we're heading towards the emergency room, my dad's waiting at the front, and he takes one look at me and he's gone. Crap. Okay. And I'm legit, the doctors and nurses are running me to the emergency room. And you my, were um, cognizant of all of this, well, you you remember it so well. I remember, I remember, it was the most terrifying moment in my life. But you remember so well, I, the detail. Yeah, I know. Cool. Um, okay, go on. So I remember yeah. Dad like sort of trying to not run, but like rushing by, and he's like, "What's going on?" And they put me in the uh, mm. emergency room, and they're like, "We can't hear any air passing through your daughter's lungs." I've turned into Superman. They ripped open my shirt, and they've put the little um, mm -hmm. stickers to one of my heart. And then I was also on the BiPAP machine, mm. which I hated so much. So for you guys who don't know, it's the machine that it's a mask that's literally strapped to your face and it forces air into your lungs, mm. and it feels like your lungs are on fire. <sighs> but I responded very well to it. And then I look up behind me to the monitor, and I'm watching my heart rate: 120, 160, 180. It keeps going up, and I'm like, I'm gonna die. Like I was, I was suffocating in that bed. So from there I was moved up to the intensive care unit and the nurses and doctors were fabulous. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. amazing. They moved me up and I stayed there for four days. Mm. Every morning and um, right before I went to bed I'd get up and I'd do a full walk mm. by myself around the intensive care unit, even with mum next to me at times. Mm. The doctors were like, you know, Drani, we don't want you to push stuff. I'm like, I'm gonna do this because I don't want to stay here mm. my whole life. I want to get out there and I want to do school and everything and I want to do what I love. Obviously I'm in acting. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It always takes my mind off of things. Well, I was in the uh, school production this year, the high school musical. While we were doing rehearsal, there was a student who was sort of um, in the corner and she started panicking. And I'm like, oh, she's probably a bit nervous about the rehearsals or something. I would go closer and I'm hearing this noise and I'm hearing a wheeze and I'm like, okay. So I, I immediately go to my bag. I don't even go to her. I go to my bag and I whip out my Ventolin and my space up. I ran her through. I'm like, this is Ventolin. I'm like, have you had asthma before? She's like, no. Nah. I'm like, okay. I'm like, sit down. It's going to be okay. And so she's there. She's tears coming out. And I'm mm. going like, one, breathe, two, count with me, breathe. Mm. And after about, I go for four parts because I didn't want to give her anything, mm. anything higher. She's like, I can breathe. I'm like, Good, I want you to sit here. I'll let the teacher know after. I was like, this happened, it's okay, it's all sorted, don't panic. Because the teacher was pregnant as well, and I didn't want her going, oh my god, I shouldn't. Um, but she was alright, her mum took her to the doctors afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, turns out it was just a bit of inflammation in the lungs, nothing asthmatic. It was just uh. a little allergic reaction to yeah. something. And a lot of the students were sort of grateful that I was there to help uh, them yeah. with the asthma. 
mm. and a lot of people were like, I didn't even know it was like such a bad thing. I'm like, you'd be surprised how much you miss oxygen when you're an asthmatic. Mm. Just being accepted in yeah. a community, even with um, what well, is known to people as a disability of some sort, yeah. is phenomenal because it's mm. like you create such a big family mm. and with that family you feel like indestructible like you can you can take on the world that's right <laughs> all right well after school you keep in touch